Hey, what's up everyone? It's Rich. All right, so finally, 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 I am back to do a spoilers review for Guardians the Galaxy Volume 2. So I promised all y'all, whoever watched my review for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, I promised that I was going to drop the spoilers review a couple of days after my movie review, and I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, I know. Uh, so what happened was I wanted to watch the movie again so that it was fresh off of my, you know, brain, off of my mind, and that didn't happen. And I didn't want to, you know, kind of screw up what I just remembered instead of, like, actually remembering it from that day on. So, two weeks later, uh, I finally watched it again with my mom. I took her and she enjoyed the hell out of the movie. Uh, she wasn't laughing a lot, not, not as much as my dad was. But anyways, I took her to the movie. So now it's, it just... A couple of hours ago and so now it's just very fresh off my mind so I can talk about spoilers and here we go all right so right off the bat I said in my review that the villain was one of those villains that you don't really know who the villain villain is until you get to the probably halfway point maybe even a little bit further than that and the villain is basically Peter Quill slash Star Lord's father played by Kurt Russell who is Ego, the living planet in the movie. So that was a shocker to me, just because even though I knew that he was playing Ego, uh, Kurt Russell, even though I knew that he was playing Ego, you know, he was, uh, I believe he, uh, they revealed that he was Ego a couple months before the movie came out, uh, there was no talks of who the villain was going to be. So there was speculations of, you know, it might be Ego, it might be someone else, it might be this or that. Uh, but there was never a concrete take on who the villain is. So, with that said, Ego, Star-Lord's father, is the villain of the story. You find out, again, like I said, halfway point, maybe even a little bit further than that, that there's something going on. He's he's scheming. He's scheming. He's up to something. And uh, basically, you find out that his whole plan this whole time was that he wanted to expand the universe, uh, but only to basically have the universe just all him. You know, he wanted to do this, the expansion is what he called it. He wanted to make all these other planets become him, basically. And um, on top of that, he needed one more celestial to do this kind of expansion that he wanted to do. And since he was, you know, pretty much going around the universe, uh, I, lack of a better wor word, fucking everyone. Uh, <laughs> Yes, yes, he was pretty much, you know, uh, making love to all these other races and other aliens out in the universe and to find the, the, his progeny, right? And once he finds that, you know, basically they would be a half celestial and with that being in mind, he can train them to be, to, to have the power that he has because technically they have their genes and DNA and this whole time he never found one and later on, uh, in the cave, in one of the caves that uh, Gamora and Nebula finds, you find out that that's actually all of his offsprings. All those dead, deceased bones and bodies there, all of his offsprings from around the universe. And obviously, lucky him, he found Star-Lord, who was actually, who actually had the genes that he needed uh, that can contain that power also. And that's why he was able to hold the Infinity Stone and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, uh, Star-Lord was. Star-Lord was, was able to hold Infinity Stone, and that's why he didn't die. And so that was the big spoiler here, basically. And also, there's other spoilers here and there uh, that I wanted to talk about, especially, mainly, the After Credits. After Credits was such a fun uh, Easter eggs, I guess. You know, basically, all these After Credits scenes are basically Easter eggs to the next movie or referring to another movie in this case they had five which was actually pretty cool it was spread out throughout the whole um uh end credit scene which was not end credit scene but just the end credits i thought that was actually a brilliant move just because if you wanted to do something like that you would want to spread everything just so that you know you get the credits and then you get like you get a minute of the credits and then you know boom oh, 10 to 15 seconds of credit scene and then boom you go back to credits in a way it, it kind of um lessens the 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 weight for all that for all the people for all the amazing people who worked on this movie and um, and i i should know i used to work for the film industry 
Anyways, anyways, uh, but yeah, no, it was spread out throughout the whole uh, end credits, and uh, so first off, you have the first one, which was basically Craglin learning to, or, you know, Sean Gunn's character, that's you know, James Gunn's brother, uh, he's basically trying to control the arrow that Rocket put back together, but also because in this movie, uh, Yondu died, Yondu freaking died, and in, in an article that I read uh, a couple of days ago, I believe it was a week ago maybe, uh, James Gunn said that Yondu is dead, as long as he's part of the MCU, James Gunn has over has said it and he will oversee that Yondu will stay dead in this whole universe. You know, it's he's not gonna be like, oh, he's gonna be brought by Infinity Stones. Maybe, but you know, he, you know what? He's like, no, I'm gonna freaking let him die because there's no, you know, what I love what I love about this volume two was that there were stakes. You felt that there were stakes, but even even with that said, you know, there are other mo other Marvel movies have stakes, but nothing ever really happens. Uh, in this one, something does happen, and, you know, freaking, like I said in my review, Michael Rooker stole the show, and also Dave Batista. but, man, the fact that they killed him off was, you know, bravo, James Gunn, bravo. And so that's another one that, that's, uh, actually a big spoiler, too, because, again, for me, he stole the show, and freaking James Gunn killed him off, and that was great, that was great, just because one of those things where there are stakes in this movie, and I believe... If anything, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, but I believe this is the first one where they actually killed off one of the main characters. So the only one I can think of is, um, shoot, I actually don't even know. I mean, technically, uh, you can say Quicksilver, but I think if anything, he was kind of just, a, he was like a wasted character, you know? Uh, so there, there, there is that. Uh, Pepper Potts, I, I'm pretty sure he's still alive. I mean, she's still alive. Uh, obviously, um, Odin, Odin, uh, I'm pretty sure he's still alive also, uh, so there's really no one that died except for Quicksilver, uh, okay, technically Coulson, but as we all know, he's not dead, uh, he's an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, that's no, that's a whole other can of worms that, uh, needs to be fixed. Well, not fixed, but just cleared up, you know, anyways, anyways. So yeah, so this, this movie, uh, Volume 2 was definitely one of those movies, one of the Marvel movies that had stakes in it, that a major character actually died, uh, especially Yondu, who's a big part of the Volume 1, and big, a major part in Volume 2, if you really think about it. And so yeah, so with Yondu dying, uh, and which was pretty cool, he got his, uh, prototype, um, freaking Finn, and that's actually the one of the best parts of this movie is that when he when he was like, I need to get the Finn, and freaking Groot was getting the you know everything for him. Uh, that that was a hilarious sequence. That was awesome. I love it. Uh, I love it. <laughs> and then like, he gave him the little fire emblem, and like, like I want to wear this a hat. Like what? Uh, anyways, uh, the Finn was a callback to Yondu's original um, artwork, and the in the original. The OG Guardians of the Galaxy. And so when he said that right away, I'm like, oh, yes. And then when they revealed it, and it was that, and I'm like, <laughs> heck yes. Heck yes. Thank you, James Gunn. Thank you. There was a purpose of why you didn't do that in the first one. And I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So, yeah, so that was the first end credit sequence where Kraglin was, you know, he he put on, I'm, I'm guessing he installed the fin or he, they made a new one for him and then he's trying to control the arrow and he freaking hits batista in the left shoulder and yeah so that was that was one so maybe he's gonna be the next yondu per se i'm not quite sure uh i've read some of the guardians of the galaxy comic books but i didn't really get too far along with it and so i don't know maybe he is a new yondu uh, he could be the new yondu i don't know i don't know we'll see we'll see so the second one that i wanted to talk about and this is mainly what else is there in the movie that's a spoiler besides um ego and yondu dying i mean for the most part that, that was pretty much it there were there was a few again few a lot of easter eggs there uh when uh, one of the ravagers said oh my god that's stanis daughter you know obviously that's nebula um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I can't really think of anything else besides in the movie itself. That was a major spoiler. I would consider those two, Yondu's death and Ego being the villain, are the major spoilers in that movie. Um, but overall, uh, it, it was basically all the end credit scenes that's also, that's, uh, that's basically a spoiler. And so the second one was, uh, part of the cameo that, uh, Sylvester Stallone had in the actual movie itself. He was, uh, basically Darkhawk. Sorry, sorry, I meant Starhawk. Starhawk, Starhawk, <laughs> Starhawk. 
Uh, he is part of the original Guardians of the Galaxy, like I said, and he had all these... He had the other characters with him. Uh, Ving Rhames was one of the original ones. He, I'm forgetting. I don't know the original Guardians of the Galaxy, I'll tell you that much. But I do know Yondu. I remember Yondu uh, because he had that fin again and he's he's ba he was basically an archer but in this iteration you know he he would whistle and then the freaking air awesome brilliant i like it i love it but yeah so there's that there's michelle yo who is also a part of the original one uh as you in the third one or sorry in the second one a uh, second end credit scene you see you know sylvester stallone's character starhawk basically talking to all the major uh ravagers uh in in the um, in the end credit scene, you see, you know, Michelle Yeoh, Bing Rhames' character, uh, Michael Rosenbaum, who actually played the icy-looking creature. Uh, that was he. He's there, and also Miley Cyrus actually played a little robot head. Uh, the voice of that was actually Miley Cyrus, which was like, what? Hey, but what? And guess what? It worked out. It worked out. You know, at that time, I think you just need to play Party in the USA, and you'll be good. You'll be good. And also, there's the other one where like he. Did some kind of magic gesture, and it seems like it's kind of like a ma the magic that uh, uh, Doctor Strange kind of uses, right? Because when he went like that, he has that like circle thing, and then it, it did the two thumbs up. And so that might be a spinoff, maybe? That would be pretty cool. The original Guardians of the Galaxy would be pretty dope. Uh, I mean, obviously they're not called the Guardians of the Galaxy, but maybe they might, I don't know, they might do it before, I, or they might take that name. I don't know, I don't know, we'll see, but that would be an interesting spin-off off of this uh, franchise, off of the Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know what they would call it, uh, the Ravagers, but I don't know, there's so many other Ravagers out there, factions, there's a hundred, uh, that's what, you know, Stallone said, uh, but yeah, we'll see, but that's awesome, I thought that was cool, having all the original, the, technically the original Guardians of the Galaxy characters from the comic books show up all in one uh, scene together. So the third one, which is basically the most, uh, I would say this is the best one even though this is the same thing with the first avenger where Th thanos showed up at the end and he turns his head turns his head and then basically all the other people are like who who what who was that who was that who is that purple dude so yeah so when uh the sovereign the high priestess again they were also the villain but not the major villain in volume two um when pretty much they got defeated twice oh well the first time by ego technically even Guardians of the Galaxy did that, did some damage as well. But the second one, it was all Guardians. They were it was all the Guardians that that defeated them. Um, she wanted to, she, you know, basically she wants revenge, and so she made this cocoon, uh, this uh, chamber, birth chamber, and called it Adam. And if you guys don't know, Adam Warlock is that race, and he is um, basically a powerful being, basically. So I don't know much about Adam Warlock, but I do know that he's he's this powerful being and basically let's let's be honest, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be the villain or maybe one of the villains in the third movie. So we'll see about that. I thought that was a cool nod. It's like, oh, here we go. Here we freaking go. There's your story for the third one. Or at least part of it. Again, I don't know, but I know that James Gunn is writing a third one now, so that's awesome. I, I'm glad that he's back. I enjoy, I loved one. I enjoyed the hell out of two. And I, I wish, that I would love the third one again. And plus, at this time, he has the freaking Zune. Star-Lord has a Zune because, you know, his his uh, Walkman got crushed by his dad. And um, now he has 300 songs to choose from. A lot of songs that you can choose from that's iconic and classy. So, I hope the soundtrack for the third one is better than the second one. And hopefully it can stand up to the first one. Or maybe even exceed that. We'll see. But the first one is just classic. It's just classic soundtrack so the fourth one uh which was a cool one not so much of a, a spoiler but in a way they're kind of getting back to where Groot is and you see a teenager Groot just playing games in his room and now star lord slash peter quill has taken the the job to basically be a father figure i mean i'm pretty sure all of them are doing that but he's basically doing it you know and th that's why he's like oh i know how yondu feels now so there you go uh Groot is a teenager Groot which was pretty awesome and he kind of did this little, um, do you guys know that Spongebob meme where he's like, oh, oh, so you want to go over there? Oh, yeah, you want to go over there? So it's, it's, it's ba he was basically doing that with Groot, but I am Groot, oh. So that was funny. Uh, I, I just realized that too. I'm pretty sure, I don't know if that was uh, James, you know, uh, Gunn's intention, but maybe he, I don't know, maybe he saw a couple of memes and just threw it. You know what, I'll do that. I'll do the Spongebob meme for this one. But it's basically just talking back in a, 
in a funky, weird voice, just imitating and uh, mocking the person that you're, uh, you know, talking to. And finally, the fifth one that I uh, want to talk about in terms of spoiler is the famous Stan Lee spoiler. Also, that was another Easter egg in the movie. That was actually part of the movie where they were when the um, uh, Rocket, Groot, Baby Groot, uh, Yondu, and Kraglin were jumping doing jump 700 i believe they say or 500 or 300 i forget it was one of those i want to say it was 700 maybe gosh i just watched this movie a few hours ago i i, I think it's either 700 or 500 one of those two but anyways again maybe even 300 i don't know i forget i forget anyways while they were doing the jump they go to a planet where you see the watchers the freaking watchers there with stan lee himself and i know there's theories about about stan lee right now because that was also part of the of the end credit scene it was him and then the watchers were about to leave him and then stan lee was like oh no but you guys gotta take me back i have more stories to tell and so and in the in the movie he's like oh yeah and there's this one time where i was a postman and i'm like what now obviously he was a postman in civil war but also he was a postman and another Marvel movie that's not connected to the MCU, but connected to the Fox movies, which was Fantastic Four. I believe it was the first one. Yes, it was the first one because they see him in the in the lobby of the of the of the build the Baxter building uh, when uh, I believe it was Johnny and uh, someone else, or I think it was all of them coming out of the of the ele elevator and you see you know Stan Lee pass by him so I'm pretty sure he's talking about the MCU uh, when he was a mailman after you know when in Civil War when uh, Rhodey was doing um what was it called when doing when he was doing rehab and then you know that's when you get uh, that joke I forget the joke was in our in, uh, in Civil War but yeah so he was a mailman there so I'm pretty sure he was talking about that not so much the Fantastic Four one but that would be awesome if technically if he was basically you know all these there's other Stan Lee's and on different multiple Earths right because that's basically what it is so but yeah there's that theory that he's playing himself like Stan Lee himself in all these movies but he's just a different character or like you know in this case he's a writer in this case he's a bartender in this case he was a He's a freaking um, uh, postman. So there is that theory, uh, but the fact that you know, I love. I just love the fact that Stan Lee's in all these Marvel movies. I mean, he deserves it. He's the one who pretty much created most of these characters, so he should be in all these movies. And they always do a great job, a fantastic job, a uh, marvelous job, doing a cameo for him. So that's that. But yeah, I mean, uh, though, let's see. I, I do. Yeah, for the most part, uh, that's pretty much the spoilers that I want to talk about. Uh, again, the end, the five end credit scenes, and obviously the two big ones, uh, Ego being the main villain and Yondu dying. So uh, that's pretty much it. I, I, I wanted to talk about that just because there's a lot of stuff that was happening in that movie and. Uh, and this 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 is my third time watching it now and this third time watching it around um definitely the mistakes are a lot more glaring you know they stand out a lot more at least at least for me you know uh but at the same time all the amazing scenes were definitely heightened and third the third time watching it for me so so again it bounces out like that and if you guys don't know my 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 um review for this i scored it an eight out of ten not as much as uh, the first one, which I would score probably 9.2, 9.3, to be honest with you. I love the first one a, a lot more. And if you haven't, and if you haven't seen my review, go check, go ahead and do that. Um, then again, why would you watch this if you haven't seen the movie? Come on, guys, come on! But yeah, that's it. Uh, I have nothing else to talk about. Uh, I pretty much talked about all of them that I want to. And that is all, y'all. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button. And if you like what you see here and all my other content, my reviews, reactions, uh, my rants, those are the new thing that I'm doing, uh, my vlogs, and um, other stuff that will be coming soon. Uh, if you like those or you want to stay along and hop on this journey with me, go ahead and click that subscribe button, and I appreciate it very much. Yes, I know this is late. This is basically three weeks late already, uh, but it's all good. I wanted, I wanted to do this. I still wanted to talk about it just because this movie is a great film, and uh, this movie is a great. This movie is a great movie. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. Have you guys seen it? Uh, if not, come on, guys. It's the third week. 
You guys should have seen it probably twice already. Get to it! Once again, thank you guys for watching. As always, I am Rich, and I am out till my next review. Uh, I don't know which one. Most likely it's going to be Alien Covenant, and I'm, I'm going to watch that this week. So yeah, I am Rich, and I am out. Stay awesome, my friends. <sighs>